Yang Dipertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Bilah Shah dan Raja Pemaisuri Agong Tunku Hajah Aziza Aminah Maimuna Iskandaria today extended their Deepavali greetings to Hindus in the country. Their Majesties conveyed their wish through a posting on the Istana Negara Facebook account. The posting expressed hope that the Festival of Lights would illuminate life with peace, prosperity, happiness and good health. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob has also wished a happy Deepavali to all Malaysians celebrating the festival today. Datuk Sri Ismail in a statement said he hoped it would further promote unity among the people. He hopes the Festival of Lights would bring more unity and strengthen the bond among the Keluarga Malaysia. He also expressed confident that this year's Deepavali Festival will be celebrated more joyfully with dearest family members and friends. The cabinet also conveyed their Deepavali greetings to all Hindu devotees celebrating the festival. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa expressed hope that this year's celebration would bring joy and happiness to all. While Senior International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Azmin Ali also tweeted that Deepavali celebrated the harmony of communities and would instill a sense of goodwill and understanding among cultures. Senior Public Works Minister Datuk Sri Fadila Yusof meanwhile hoped that Deepavali would bring harmony to all and strengthen the familial bonds of Keluarga Malaysia. There are still many young voters aged 18 and above throughout the country who are unaware that they have been registered automatically as voters. As such, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said parties' machinery must approach youths and explain the matter to them and ensure they come out to vote during polling day next month. Eh, ramai di kalangan pengundi mungkin uh, tak tahu pun nama mereka telah pun tersenarai sebab sekarang ini untuk uh, pendaftaran adalah pendaftaran secara otomatik. Cukup saja umur 18 tahun, otomatik dia menjadi pengundi. Setengah tu mungkin dia tak perasan pun. Beberapa kali saya jumpa dengan pengundi muda, terutamanya pelajar-pelajar dan sebagainya, dia tak tahu pun nama dia sudah ada di dalam senarai pengundi. Tanggungjawabnya bukan tanggungjawab SPR. Ya, tanggungjawab itu tanggungjawab parti. Dan sebagai kita sebagai parti, kita ada jentera kita dan jentera kita lah yang akan melakukannya. Memastikan pengundi muda keluar. Bukan setakat keluar tetapi menyokong parti kita lah. The Prime Minister was met at the Majlis Amanat Jelajah Keluarga Malaysia held at the Complex Ujana Kewangan Convention Hall. On claims of a drastic rise in voters in Sabah, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri asked the EC to conduct an investigation into the validity of the addition of voters, adding that the increase did not seem to involve young voters. The ferry carrying over 500 passengers and crew members that were stranded at around 3 p.m. while on its way to Langkawi from Kuala Kedah has been safely towed to Kuala Kedah ferry jetty last night. Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency MMEA, Kuala Kedah Maritime Zone Director, CMDR Maritime, Noor Arzir Yanti Ishak said the ferry was towed back by a towboat owned by a cargo company in Kuala Kedah at 9.25 p.m. All on board were safe. Three passengers were sent to Sultanah Bahia Hospital here for further observation as one of them had a nervous disorder while two suffered breathing difficulties. Earlier, a total of 272 passengers were brought off in stages by the MMEA Perkasa 1224 boat, a police PSC-19 patrol boat with assistance from several local fishing boats and around Kuala Kedah and Yan, while the rest of the passengers on board were towed in. The MMEA Kuala Kedah Maritime Zone had received a report from the Marine Department about an Express Bahagia 98 passenger ferry with 547 people being stranded at 1.2 nautical miles off the Kuala Kedah estuary at 4.15pm. 
The delay in the entry of foreign workers into Malaysia is due to the source countries as they have to carry out several screening tasks such as health screening and others. Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Dato Zuraida Kamarudin said nevertheless this problem is being resolved and the intake of foreign workers is proceeding smoothly. mula-mula tu memang memang ada hiccup slot dah hiccup uh, jadi lambat sikit tapi memang uh, berjalan tapi tak angkanya sikit ketika itu tapi sekarang dah jalan dengan lancar dan angka uh, lebih banyak lagi telah masuk dalam negara tapi uh, masalahnya sekarang ni bukan di uh, di uh, apa di sebelah Malaysia tapi di sebelah negara sourcing daripada negara sumber kerana mereka harus menjalankan apa ni tak uh, saringanlah uh, medical lah dan sebagainya jadi itu yang membuatkan kita lambat. Meanwhile, Datuk Zuraida said the exports of agri-commodity have recorded a good achievement on a month-to-month -month basis, hitting more than 100 billion ringgit since early 2022. However, she said the target of 300 billion ringgit would not be achievable this year due to COVID-19 and the foreign labour issue. Datuk Zuraida said even though the agro-commodity export value target has not been met this year, the Ministry of Plantation Industries and Commodities, MPIC, believed the export value will increase following the recovery in the economy, which is almost back to normal. The Ministry of Higher Education, Mohi, hopes that the initiatives outlined in Budget 2023 can proceed as planned to safeguard the welfare borrowers of the National Higher Education Fund Corporation PTPTN loans and depositors of the National Education Savings Scheme, SSPN. Its Minister Datuk Sri Dr Noraini Ahmad in expressing the matter said these initiatives could inject motivation for all students to study hard to obtain excellent results. Among the initiatives tabled were the PTPTN loan repayment exemption for all borrowers who obtained a first-class bachelor's degree, increase in rate to 100% of PTPTN loans and the provision of computer loans for the M40 group, as well as individual income tax relief of up to 8,000 ringgit for annual net savings in SSPN extended until 2024. She said for the PTPTN loan repayment exemption, applications have been open since the last 15 15th September until 31st December 2022 to all borrowers who graduated starting in 2019, having obtained a first-class bachelor's degree, regardless of economic status, race and religion. Apart from that, in the presentation of Budget 2023, discount incentives were also offered for PTPTN loan repayment from 1st November 2022 to 30th April 2023. The Prisons Department has received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the International Craft Awards ICA Night in New Delhi, India in recognition for its contributions in the sustainable development of crafts and social engagement. Prisons Director General Dato Nordin Muhammad, who attended the awards night, said the award was the result of the effort shown by the department's officers and staff in implementing rehabilitation and skill programs for inmates, including those related to crafts. The International Craft Awards were started in 2017 as a tribute to craftspersons, artisans, designers, individuals, institutions, councils, villages and organisations throughout the world for their outstanding contribution to the craft sector. It is organised by Craft Village, a social organisation based in New Delhi that is working towards training and promoting crafts and is a member of the World Crafts Council. In a foreign segment, two pilots killed as a Russian fighter jet crashes into Siberian home.
Welcome back. Boris Johnson has withdrawn from the race to be Conservative leader, leaving Rishi Sunak as the clear front runner to be Prime Minister. As more senior party figures cautioned that a Johnson comeback would lead to chaos and, and an early election, the former Prime Minister struggled to get the backing of enough Conservative MPs. In a statement, Johnson claimed to have won the support of 102 colleagues, too clear of the threshold needed. But only about 60 had publicly stated their support for him. In contrast, Sunak won the support of 150 MPs after piling on nominations from all wings of the party. The third challenger, Penny Mordaunt, had about 27. Johnson, who never officially launched his campaign, said on Sunday night he was not running because he could not command enough support from the parliamentary party. Earlier, Sunak launched his official campaign with a declaration that fixing the economy was his priority, but he gave no media interviews or formal manifesto showing his proposed program for government. Mojant will now be in a race with Sunak to pick up some of Johnson's former supporters to see if she can make it on the ballot paper for a final runoff with her rival. On Sunday, she gave an interview to the BBC's Laura Quinsdesberg saying she wanted to be a halfway house between Johnson and Sunak. Hurricane Roslyn weakened rapidly Sunday after making landfall on Mexico's Pacific coast, nonetheless leaving damage from high winds, landslides and flooding. No deaths have been tallied so far, but there were widespread reports of damage amid fears that still rising rivers could lead to more flooding. The storm was some 90 kilometres south-southeast of Durango with maximum sustained winds of 112 kilometres per hour. Civil protection authorities in the hardest-hit states of Nayarit and Jalisco reported material damage, flooding, falling trees and landslides that blocked highways. In the village of Sayulita in Nayarit State, landslides buried some houses. Residents waded through mud to try to salvage their possessions. On a journey from Puerto Vallarta to the hardest-hit part of Nayarit, there was a mudslide that forced the closure of a highway and nearly buried a trailer. But as the storm began to pass, the Mexican government discontinued all warnings south of the coastal city of San Blas, including Puerto Vallarta. A tropical storm warning remained in effect from San Blas north to Mazatlan. Kiev's energy operator on Sunday announced that scheduled power cuts have been introduced in the Ukrainian capital as Russia has repeatedly targeted the nation's power network. More than one million Ukrainian households have lost electricity following recent Russian strikes, according to the Ukrainian presidency, with at least a third of the country's power stations destroyed ahead of winter. Moscow announced a new incursion on Sunday, saying it had destroyed a depot in central Ukraine that was storing over 100,000 tonnes of aviation fuel. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Saturday evening denounced vile strikes on critical objects by Russia after fresh attacks on energy facilities and power outages were reported nationwide, including in western Ukraine, far from the front line. Energy company Detec said a national energy operator, Ukrainego, introduced stabilization shutdowns in Kiev on Sunday to avoid accidents. It added that the blackouts should last no more than four hours, but may be longer due to scale of damage to the power supply system. A Russian military jet crashed into a presidential building in the Siberian city of Irkutsk on Sunday and the two pilots were killed, officials said. The second such fatal incident in six days involving a Sukhoi fired plane. In a post on Telegram, Irkutsk Governor Igor Komzev said the plane crashed into a two-storey house in the city. He published a video showing firefighters clambering over the wreckage and directing jets of water at the still smouldering rubble. No one on the ground was hurt. Officials said the plane was a Sukhoi Su-30 fighter on a test flight. Last Monday, a Sukhoi Su-34 crashed into an apartment block in the south 
southern city of Yevs near Ukraine, and at least 15 people were killed. Authorities said initial investigation of the disaster in which the pilots ejected pointed to a technical malfunction of the aircraft. Videos of Sunday's incident shared on social media showed the plane dived almost vertically before crashing in a fireball, sending dense black smoke into the sky. Kumsev says 150 nearby homes were without electricity and work was underway to restore power. Russia's state investigative committee said it had launched a criminal investigation into violations of air safety rules. Korean Airlines flight KE631 with 173 people on board overran the runway while landing at Cebu International Airport in the Philippines, but no injuries were reported. The A330-300 plane carrying 162 passengers and 11 crew members attempted to land twice in bad weather and on the third attempt overran the runway at 11.07pm last night. Currently, the Cebu airport is temporarily closed due to the stalled aircraft and other flights to Cebu are being diverted to nearby airports or returning to their points of origin. Thousands of Hungarians, including teachers and students, marched through Budapest to protest against the government, demanding higher wages for teachers and a curb on surging inflation that is eroding incomes. Protesters held up banners like No Teachers, No Future, a few hours after Nationalist Prime Minister Viktor Orban pledged to preserve economic stability and maintain a cap on household energy bills. For the first time, hot air balloons are assembled and inflated in the Zocalo of Mexico City, where thousands of citizens watch as the balloons are inflated and lit up to the beat of music. The hot air balloons arrived in Mexico City from Leon, Guajuato, where the hot air balloon fair is held once a year. Sheep replaced cars on the streets of Madrid on Sunday as shepherds led their flocks through the center of the Spanish capital following ancient herding routes. The annual event, which started in 1994, allows shepherds to use traditional routes to herd their livestock from northern Spain to more southerly pastures for winter grazing. Sports Bagnia wins 10th race in Sepang to edge closer to MotoGP world title. Malaysia's professional men's singles ace Lee Zichia faltered in his bid to claim his maiden Denmark Open title after losing to China's Xi Yu Qi in Odense last night. Malaysia were routed 8-0 by Australia in their match on the second day of the Sultan Johor Cup Under-21 Hockey Tournament at Tamandaya Hockey Stadium in Johor Bahru last night. The national junior hockey team had begun well in the first quarter, attacking aggressively and making things difficult for the visiting team early in the match. But then things fell apart as the Malaysians failed to settle into a winning rhythm, allowing the Australians to score their first goal through Liam Hart in the 19th minute. There was no turning back then as Australia went ahead with two more goals, with David Hobart scoring in the 36th minute and a goal by Cooper Burns from a penalty corner in the 14th. Fourth. Whatever hope the junior team had of salvaging the match was shattered with two Australian goals in the space of two minutes in the fourth quarter. Hart scoring again in the 47th minute and Jack Holland finding the net in the 49th. With only five minutes remaining, Burns completed a hat-trick by converting two penalty corners in the 55th and 58th minutes before Brody Foster sealed the route with a field goal, the eighth of the match for Australian. A minute later. The tournament takes a break today and matches will resume tomorrow with hosts Malaysia going up against South Africa.
pertahanan negara kita. Ducati Lenovo team rider Francesco Bagnia clinched his seventh win this season after making the most of a strong start to win the 2022 Malaysian Motorcycle Grand Prix at the Sepang International Circuit SIC on Sunday. Bagnaya, better known as Peko, extended his lead in this season's MotoGP Riders Championship to 23 points after fighting his way from the third row of the starting grid in ninth place, ending the race with a time of 40 minutes and 14.332 seconds. He finished 0 0.270 seconds ahead of second place fellow Italian Enia Bastiani of Gerasini Racing MotoGP, while reigning world champion Fabio Quattararo of Monster Energy Yamaha Maha MotoGP was third. As the season heads to a close with the final race in Valencia, Spain in two weeks' time, Bagnia only needs to finish the race at the Ricardo Tomo circuit in at least 13th place to secure his maiden MotoGP championship. Guattararo, currently second in the Riders' Championship standing, started behind Bagnea in 12th place but managed to power into the front group early in the race. Six-time MotoGP world champion Marc Marquez of Repsol Honda team could only manage a seventh-place finish while Prima Pramac Racing's Jorge Martin of Spain, who started the race in pole position, crashed out of the race. Meanwhile, Elf Mark VDS racing team rider Tony Abrolino claimed his third Moto2 win of the season at the Malaysian MotoGP, which was marred by an early crash. The 22-year-old Italian who started from the second position blazed the track to be first to cross the finish line with a time of 38 minutes and 25.233 seconds. Spain's Alonso Lopez of Beta Tool Speed Up came in second, while in the Gas Gas Aspar team's Jake Dixon of Great Britain finished in third third place. Coming into the penultimate race of the season, Idemitsu Honda team, Asia rider Ayogoras wished to strengthen his grip at the top of the championship standings was dashed after he crashed out of the race in his attempt to take the lead against Abrolino. Malaysian wildcard riders Kasma Daniel Kasmayudin and Azroy Hakim Anwar completed the race in 19th and 22nd place, respectively. In Moto3, the country's young and upcoming rider Sharif Fudin Asman was crestfallen after placing 16th on Sunday. Shaifuddin, or widely known as Damok, described his performance in the race at the SIC as somewhat let down by the settings of his machine. The 20-year-old Trangano born rider who raced on a wildcard ticket with the Vision Track Racing Team recorded a time for 38 minutes, 19.401 seconds after starting 21st on the grid. Dane Hoga Rooney wrote another chapter into his standout season on Sunday at the Stockholm Open, where he upset top seed Stefano Sitsi passes 6-4, 6-4 to win his second tour-level title. The 19-year-old opened his shoulders and hit through the world's number five throughout the one-hour, 35-minute clash. Firing 20 winners and saving the one break point he faced to earn his third top five win. In an aggressive display, Rune took the ball early and succeeded. In Belgium, Felix Auger Alessim clinched the European Open title by beating Sebastian Corda in straight sets in Antwerp, replicating last week's Firenze Open triumph to maintain his strong run of form. Auger Alassim swept aside J.J. Wolf to emerge victorious in Italy a week ago and was in control from the start on Sunday as he beat another American to win his third ATP title of the year. The Canadian seized the initiative when he broke Cornas' serve to go 4-2 up in the opener before saving in Turin. And that concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, Boris Johnson pulls out of UK Prime Minister race, leaving Rishi Sunak as front runner. We would also like to wish our Hindu viewers happy Dipavali. May this festive season be filled with celebrations, joy and light. Thank you. I'm Rene Fong. Stay tuned to TV2 and Salam, Kluaga Malaysia.